modeling of e-commerce in Excel. Before we go into details, let me start with a short intro. We're gonna present you here the logic we're gonna use in uh, the Excel to reflect the, the business model. So in the case of e-commerce, we'll have some visits. That through conversion rate will translate into number of transaction with thanks to assumptions on the average value of transaction, we'll get to the revenues of the e-commerce player. Then on the basis of that, using the, the gross margin expressed as a percentage of the revenues, we'll get the gross margin. Before going in any further, we'll have to estimate the costs related to the business. So we're gonna estimate three, three types of costs. One is the cost of getting traffic to our site, then the cost of logistics, so delivering the goods to the customers, and also transaction fees related to the transaction we have made, so mainly to the payment platform we're using. On the base of this, we're gonna get something which we will call net margin. And to get to the operating profit, the last level we will be reaching in this modeling, we need fixed costs. Every model is built roughly in the same uh, manner. Uh, we're using the same philosophy. So we will have a, a summary sheet where we have the links to the, the underlying sheets. If you go to any of them, you can always go back through this link to the summary. This is especially important if you build a very complicated model in Excel with a lot of sheets. This allows the other guys to get around easily. So we start with the sales and margin development. Here we're gonna go exactly as we did in the PowerPoint intro. So we start with the number of visit, which is in period one, we actually give it by months. It's 200,000 visitors. Just just to remind you, blue means that we haven't tested the assumption. So this is something we have to test in the MVP stage or we have to test it in the very first month. Then we have to put some conversion rate, again assumption. We assume that this will be two, two percentage. And out of this, by multiplying one by another one, we get 4,000 transaction. Then we put the average assumed transaction value, which is 150 and we get to the 600k per month. Now, having those sales revenues, now let's go to gross margin. So gross margin is calculated on the basis of the sales and revenues we've calculated above here, and the assumed gross margin, again, it is in blue, so it is something you have to test. Out of this, we get 180,000 per month of gross margin. In order to get to the net margin, as we mentioned before, we have to somehow estimate the cost of traffic, cost of logistics and transaction. And out of this, after we calculated them, we will get the net margin. So let me just go through how we go around and estimate the cost of traffic. So basically what we have to do is first of all, estimate the structure in which we get the traffic to our site. So here we have the sources and this is the they share in generating the total traffic. It should add up to 100, there you go. So this says that 20% of our visitors to our site will be a direct, so they basically know the, the site and uh, they just directly enter. Obviously in the first stage, it might be that it's close to zero because they don't know your site and this grows over time to those 20%. We can actually model it here over time. Then uh, organic search, so they basically put it into the Google or Bing and they get your site as a result of the research. Newsletters and emailing. So basically you gather the emails and they're emailing them. Google AdWords. So obviously by showing ads at the uh, uh, search, you get the traffic. Affiliation, if you have them. Display ads. So it could be on other places other than uh, search. And Facebook ads. Always we will have others. So you're gonna have this here if you have any other ideas. So it could be also offline ideas. Now, this is the, the share. And then we have to, for each and every source, try to estimate how much it costs us to, to get uh, one visit from there. So obviously direct is zero or close to zero, organic the same. We have to pay for newsletters maybe, for sure for Google AdWords, affiliation, display ads, etc. So now let's see how the formula works. So basically what, what it does, it multiplies the structure at which you get the, the traffic by the cost. So in this way, in this very first part, so some product we get the average weighted cost of getting one visitors. And then it basically multiplies by the number of visits we want to, to get. So in order to get 200,000 visits, we have to spend 66,000 per month. Now let's see how we 
take care of the logistics. Logistics, basically, we take the transaction we have calculated here, we put them here, and we put also the cost of delivery per transaction we have negotiated with our supplier. Now let's go to the transaction fees. So transaction fees are calculated very easy. So we get basically the, the revenue, the revenues sales we're going to generate, and then we put the transaction fee as a percentage of those revenues. This is the, the usual practice in most cases, or in some services you can have a a mixture so usually it will be a fixed amount which is small and then the percentage and then it can be also capped by some sort of a formula so really here it should be reflected depending on what kind of formula you're using now as we mentioned before we get the gross margin from here the cost of traffic from here the cost of logistics from this formula and transaction from here and we get the net margin which is uh, in this case 76 as we have shown in the PowerPoint intro, we need also the fixed cost. So basically everything which is not connected with generating the cost. So here you would have the, the head offices or headquarters. You would also have uh, any development you're using. And uh, this is actually quite important whenever you are trying to get the break even point. In our case, we're going to be using very simple formulas. So we have as a cost position salaries, materials and utilities, maintenance, rent, depreciation and external services. Out of this, salaries are somehow complicated in a, a little bit difficult manner. And then also the rent. For salaries, we are using the, the so-called FTEs. So FTE is a full-time equivalent and it, it is much better to use than uh, number of people because number of people is not really a good estimation of your cost. Usually how you would estimate the cost is to translate a number of people into full-time equivalents. How you do it? It's very simple. You just look at the number of hours they are working for you per month and divide it by 170. So if somebody is working 80 hours, it is roughly half FTE. The total cost we get of salaries we get by multiplication of the, the FTEs, the average sales, and then we have something which is very important in many countries, which is the social security. In the case of Poland, it constitutes up to 23%, and this is substantial, so model for this as well. Then rents is estimated in an easy manner. We get the, the square meters and we have the, the fee per square meters. We multiply them and we get the cost. So all in all, we get 82,000 per month of fixed costs. So how does it translate to the PNL? Well, as you can see, the net margin from the previous exercise, from the sales and margin sheet is 76, but the fixed cost is actually 86,000 and we end up with a negative operating profit, which basically means that we are burning a lot of money. And actually, as you can see, there is no like way out in the next 12 months, there is apparently no movement upwards. So this would probably mean that you should go back to the sales and margin, think what you can change in terms of the conversion or in terms of the average value transaction. Uh, the other thing you could have a look at is the, the structure of how you get the, the traffic and the cost per visit many. Maybe by optimizing some of them or changing the strategy, you can get the, the cost of one visit lower, which will help you boost the, the results up and uh, will help you to stop burning money. The other thing you could have a look at is the fixed cost. So just make sure that you need all the people and make sure that the office you, you've got is basically not too big for your budget. That's all when it comes to e-commerce. As you can see, this is just one of the or many models you can create in terms of e-commerce. If you have any questions, please put them into discussion. If you would like to know how to modify it to adjust for your way of getting the revenues, please also put this in the discussion. We'll answer you and we'll provide you with a modified version provided we can obviously do it. Okay, have a good luck.